yeah, I think the U.S. dollar is uh, it's in its final death throes. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take before it's overthrown. Are you tired of overpaying for your gold, silver, and platinum bullion coins and bars? Then visit sdbullion.com today. SD Bullion was recently named the 177th fastest growing company in the United States by Inc. Magazine. This is because they offer the absolute lowest prices in the industry and follow up with over-the-top customer service. So what are you waiting for? Go to sdbullion.com today. Enjoy more than 60,000 happy investors that save money on every precious metals purchase they make. Hey everyone, this is Elijah Johnson with SilverDoctors.com and back with us today is John Embry from Sprott Asset Management. John, thank you so much for joining us today. It's always a pleasure to chat with you, Elijah. All right. Well, over the last couple of weeks, we haven't seen gold and silver doing very well. What is your perspective on why gold and silver have smashed down? Well, clearly the people in control here, the uh, I would say it's the Western governments, the central banks, PIS, etc., do not want higher gold and silver prices in, in the current uh, environment where central banks are creating money hand over fist and cryptocurrencies, which I think are reflecting reality, are going berserk on the upside. Gold and silver stands of the central bankers are their greatest enemy and the greatest enemy of pure fiat currency. So they're working overtime here to make sure the prices are kept under control. And I would make the observation that I have never, and I've been following this sector for 40 plus years, have ever seen gold and silver cheaper in relation to sort of other asset prices or their fund fundamental value. Definitely. I mean, we were just talking before the interview that you were saying that $15 silver is just bizarre right now that silver is so low. Well, think about it. I mean, silver traded at $50 in 1980. And it traded again in 2011. Now it's trading at less than one-third that price, where everything else is on the moon. It's risen dramatically in, the, in that environment. And it's not like, I mean, you could say, sure, silver is a precious metal, as are platinum and gold, and they're all under pressure. But silver has an a lot of growing industrial uses and, and medical uses. I... It's re quite remarkable that they've been able to keep a lid on the price to the extent they have. I think this is the cheapest asset I have ever seen. So what about the gold-silver ratio? Because it keeps going higher. It's actually right now around 80 to 1. And that's, a really, that's really different from the historical ratio of more like 15 to 1. Well, that's, you know, it, I think the gold-silver ratio tends to sort of rise in what would be construed as a bear market. They have created a bear market. I don't think the fundamentals justify a bear market. And as a result, the gold-silver ratio has gone up. Now, when this changes, and I believe it will change violently, I really do think the middle ground has been lost and that we're going to either have to put up with these prices for somewhat longer, but there isn't going to have a, be a gradual rise. It's going to be an explosion in price, not unlike Bitcoin. And at that point, then the gold-silver ratio will plummet to the levels that it you know, gets to in bull markets for gold and silver. And I think I see no reason why silver in the end can't rise five times the price of gold, which I think is going to go up a lot as well. Definitely. And getting to why gold and silver are low right now, can you expand on the reasons behind this? And is there a lot of manipulation involved? There was definitely a lot of manipulation involved, and I think the reason is very simple. If gold and silver, which I can refer to as the canaries in the coal mine when it comes to monetary policy, were reflecting what is truly going on in world monetary policy, interest rates would rise precipitously, and the entire debt structure, which is enormous, would collapse on the, on the system. So consequently, this is a last gasp effort to keep the uh, whole thing going. And I suspect that uh, we're in the, I call it the end game. We're in the end game right now, so the actions are even more bizarre than normal. Now, as for cryptocurrencies, over the last week or so, we've seen Bitcoin just skyrocket. Um, probably the most it has ever, um, it was up, you know, thousands of dollars just in a day. What is your perspective? And then, you know, it, it crashed also again um, 
I believe on Friday it crashed about $3,000. I mean, it's just up and down and mostly up though. So what is your perspective on, you know, that we're seeing Bitcoin now at, you know, thousands and, you know, in the the $10,000, $20,000 range, anywhere from there, it just seems to uh, keep, it's really volatile, but it just seems to keep going up. What is your perspective on the price action we've been seeing in Bitcoin and also the other cryptocurrencies? Well, I think it's getting a little extreme. Like I, I was aware of uh, cryptocurrencies at the very beginning. I thought they were a really I- interesting idea, but I, I never envisioned anything quite like this. But I think what they do reflect is money trying to escape from the system. And at the same time, there is no mechanism to short them. And there is, a, because they're mined out of computers, there is a limited supply. And so there's an enormous amount of money around the world. And these market caps are still relatively small in, in a global sense. So consequently, as money's coming from everywhere chasing these things, not surprising, the prices have gone up sharply. Now, I see, as you know, they're introducing a futures contract on that. Often when you get into the futures contract, there's more ability to manipulate prices. And I, I still am interested in what the official government response is eventually going to be, because these things, as gold and silver, are direct competitors of the pure fiat monetary system. Definitely. I know Peter Schiff came out the other day and was saying that, you know, fiat currencies, when the currency crisis happens, when fiat currencies collapse, he thinks that cryptocurrencies will collapse with them. What is your perspective on that? I, I, I'm not sure. I, I would be, I, I'm not going to come out and say that for sure. But, but I suspect that if the, everything, like everything that's inflated today, and I've never seen more inflated go, uh, stock, bond, and real estate markets in my career. Uh, it strikes anything that is part of that inflation, and at this point, the cryptocurrencies are, I think they would probably have a rather violent reaction in price. But I, I, I'm, I'm, cryptocurrencies might be a thing of the future. So, I mean, I'm not prepared to diss them as much as I would, say, the bond market. I think, for example, the bond market, to me, is the most preposterous thing on the planet. Anybody that owns bonds at these interest rates is nuts because one of two things is going to happen. Either there's going to be hyperinflation, which I think there's probably a better chance of, and then under that case, bonds are worthless. And they are failing that. We're going to have a hard debt deflation and a significant amount of the bonds won't be able to pay. So quite frankly, if I had to choose between cryptocurrencies and bonds, I'd take cryptocurrencies. So, but... You know, cryptocurrencies have gone up so much. So why do you think that cryptocurrencies still have a future? A lot of people, a lot of people are saying that it's a bubble right now. What is your perspective? Well, I, I, well, I think, I mean, it certainly has all characteristics of a bubble. Like, I mean, I was looking at a chart of all the great sort of price rises in the last hundred, several hundred years. Nothing has risen at the rate of Bitcoin. And this is the fastest rising asset class in certainly in the last several hundred years. So consequently, you just instinctively, you think, well, wait a minute, there's a lot of dumb money chasing this now, and consequently, there has to be a violent reaction. So I I suspect that will be the case. But in the end, I think cryptocurrencies will have a place in the system, and it's just a matter of trying to establish a value for them. And I don't think anybody knows what that value is. And I've seen guys talking about Bitcoin going to a million dollars, and these aren't morons. I mean, these guys are fairly intelligent guys. So, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of difference of opinion on this subject. But having said that, I'm still infinitely more comfortable personally owning gold and silver at these prices relative to cryptocurrencies. Now, does the distinction between cryptocurrencies for you and, you know, just other fiat currencies, is the distinction that, you know, the limited in supply kind of like gold is, and that's why you think that is they possibly the, have exactly a Exactly, Elijah. I mean, I, on the assumption that they can control the creation of these things. I mean, I've seen all these absurd stories about if you continued to mine cryptocurrencies at the rate we're doing right now, you'd use all the electricity in the world by some you know date in the future. So I, you know, we're in the this is this is something brand new, and when things are brand new, anything's possible in the short run. But just by the nature of the violence of the rise, I'd be very careful here. Now, moving on here to the dollar, um, you know, you've talked about in the past about how it seems like 
all currencies in general, but um, also the dollar seem to be kind of they're headed towards a collapse. Now, one of the things that I've talked with a lot of my guests about is that, you know, a lot of the dollars are that are used are used outside the United States with with other countries, you know, trading them and so on, buying oil with dollars. And there's this thing, you know, called the petrodollar that the dollar is mm-hmm. propped up because a lot of countries um, use the dollar to trade oil. Now, it seems like there's a lot of cracks in this system that are appearing. For example, we're hearing that China is going to launch, launch a yuan denominated oils futures contract. What is your perspective on the petrodollar and some of the cracks we're seeing? Oh, I think the petrodollar is in its latter stages. I mean, it's been a wonderful benefit for the United States. I don't know. I was born in the United States many years ago, and I have a great love for the country, but I am very fearful about what's coming uh, because the U.S. is really dined out in its reserve currency status. And as a result, I mean, as, as you pointed out, there's trillions and trillions of dollars floating around the world because it's been kind of the currency that traded globally. And it was further supported by the fact that all oil transactions had to be done in dollars. And this is all gradually shifting away from that. And you've got, I mean, we could get into the debt situation in the United States. I mean, it's just not the 20 trillion of funded government debt. I mean, it's the hundreds of trillions of unfunded liabilities and all the, it, it, it's just a debt morass. So consequently, yeah, I think the U.S. dollar is, uh, it's in its final death throes. It's just a matter of how long it's going to take before it's overthrown. So what, in your perspective, are the best ways to prepare for such a collapse? Well, quite frankly, I mean, I think gold and silver, given their traditional value and the fact that the Easterners, say the Chinese, the Russians, Indians and what have you, are still great believers in gold and have been buying it hand over fist as North Americans have been unloading it. Uh, I think that at this point, your safest bet, I mean, I can't say you're going to make a lot of money in the next six weeks or anything, but I mean, your safest bet for when this whole thing kind of unravels would be to have a considerable exposure to physical gold and silver and some of the quality shares, which I, you know, they're as cheap relative to the price and, uh, and, and other things that I've ever seen in my career. All right. Well, John Embry, thank you so much for joining us today. Before we let you go, did you want to share with the viewers any last thoughts you had and where they can find you online? Uh, basically, you can find me at Sprout Inc. And, uh, but it, my final thoughts are, I mean, th- this is a remarkable period. And I, I think we're in a financial asset inflation, which really got started in the early 80s. And it's just gradually gathered steam. And now everybody who hasn't been around for as long as I have thinks this is normal. But it isn't normal. This is an most abnormal, one of the most abnormal periods in financial history, and it will end horribly. And it's just a matter of what we're not debating the ending. It's just how long it's going to take to arrive. And when that day arrives, I think some physical gold and silver will stand you in very good stead. All right. Once again, uh, thank you so much for joining us today, John Embry. Elijah, it's always my pleasure.